What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Not A Sheep podcast. My name is Matt, and I'm here with my bro, John. What's up, guys? Happy to be here. Happy to do another episode. Uh, I have to say, the other day, I hopped on Spotify, and sometimes it recommends certain playlists for me Mm -hmm. based on my listening habits. And I think I finally figured out my genre of choice. Like your music taste? Yeah, like I never really knew how to describe it to people when they're like, oh, what do you like? And I think my, or you or some of my friends probably have an idea just based on the artists I talk about. Yeah. But I, there was this playlist called Teardrop. Ooh. And it, when I clicked on it, I was like, this sounds intriguing. <laughs> and it basically was like, I think it said something along the lines of like depressing hip hop or like emo hip hop or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a, when I went in there, it was a ton of artists like Breakins and then this guy named Jack Kays, who I'd never heard of. But like, just a lot. Uh, there was like nothing nowhere. Right. Yeah. Who we talked about last week with Elijah. And I'm like, all these are, and every single song in the playlist, I was like, this one's a banger. That's a banger. <laughs> That's a banger. And I'm like, oh my God, maybe I just like this like sort of emo hip hop or whatever you call it. And maybe that's my style. That, that makes sense. <laughs> what, were there any other artists that you've like previously talked about that were in the playlist? Let me, let me just go. Yeah. So it's called Teardrop. Okay, and then it says Emo Feelings for the Misunderstood. Oh. Featuring some tracks handpicked by Jack Kays himself. So I don't know if this Jack Kays is an artist, and I think I don't think it's his playlist. The playlist has like 850,000 likes, but it has so there's some X songs, Lil Peep, okay. Um, Kid Leroy, Six Dogs, Young Pinch, Ian Dior, Josh A. Snot, who I think by the way, I've mentioned Snot before. Mm-hmm. And like Snot. The name is funny, but he he had a video. Did you see his video with Cole Bennett? Is it recent? Yeah, a couple oh, months I ago did, he actually, had a video yeah. with on Lyrical Lemonade with Cole Bennett. And I just think he's super talented. Um and I think he's going to be big in a couple years. But I don't know, man. I uh I feel glad cuz now I feel like I can describe I can just play people this playlist and I'm like this is my this is my stuff, yeah, you know? The- Teardrops, the <laughs> the not a sheep that peaked in middle school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, what do you feel like if there was a certain play? Well, is there a particular big playlist that you go to, to when you're trying to find new music or stuff that you just really love? Well, so I'm on Apple Music, so the playlist kind of sucked. Okay, so like, I've never really been into playlists. I've talked about that before, but like I think I kind of know what my sound is now, and it varies. But like. Lately, I've been big on like pop hip hop. So like mixing both. And that can be anything from Arizona Zervis, which is like rap trap, but with like guitars and like that kind of sound. Yeah. So like very alternative rap. Um, Like who's an example of an artist that you... This is an alternative rap, but like Black Bear is kind of like anything from emo pop to like yeah, sometimes I actually rap, but like I don't. But know. would you you would, wouldn't listen to like Lil Peep, really? No, I'm not. I'm not big into like the emo voice, if that makes <laughs> okay. sense. Like that kind of style of singing. Yeah. Like, um, same with like Machine Gun Kelly, because he's featured on some of the songs with like artists I listen to, and I just yeah. I always kind of skip over his verse, <laughs> but like you know, that's yeah. just kind of how it is. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever? But did you ever listen to any of his the new one? That's like a punk no, rock album. I've been thinking of checking it out. Um, did you see he put out like a movie? Really? Well, it's <laughs> I had no like, idea. So I've talked about this idea to you before of like, it'd be really cool sometime to do like a kind of like a story mix with a music video. And it's kind of what he did. Like he didn't really do it oh. how the way I would want to do it. But it's literally like on his Vivo. Like it, as if it's a music video, but oh. I'm pretty sure it's like 40 minutes long. Oh, so it's like a short film kind of, or like a, yeah. I guess a almost close to like a feature length film. Right. And it's like starring, what's his name? One of the really big TikTok guys. Oh, uh, okay. And there's like actors in it. I don't Is know. Is he in it? Or yeah, did he so like I, direct it or I, something? I think both. Oh. Um, Because I think it's like, he'll do a song and then it'll cut to the movie thing. And then it'll be a song cut to the movie. I haven't seen oh. it, but my friend was telling me about it. That's dope. Um, that's kind of cool. I mean, I'm not a fan of him, but like he was also in Bird Box. I don't know yeah, if you remember I, that. I, I was about to say the it only just time randomly I, pops up. <laughs> yeah, I just remember one night I was watching Bird Box and I was like, why is MGK here yeah, all like, of a sudden? It's so random. And that was during, not during, but just after all the like Eminem beef. Yeah, like so he was not really liked relevance. at the time. But yeah. 
Um, yeah, no, I mean, I I never really listened to much of his rap stuff, but after Cade recommended this project and said how different it is, I gave it a shot and I I really do like it. And I've never, I don't know, I hope that that project was kind of the intro to like punk rock. Yeah. I don't know, like all the loyal punk rock fans, I don't know if, if, like, I always wonder. Is he like a bad example? Yeah, like, is he not respected? It's like, oh, that's not real. Yeah, maybe punk that's rock. that's kind of like the equivalent of what I've noticed and what one of my like older friends would tell me. Like I, when I was younger, I was big into Logic, and he was always like, "Dude, like Logic's not it. Like you, just trust me." And I was always confused by what he meant. And he he described it to me as like, "Logic is f- hip hop for people that don't like hip hop." <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, "Oh my gosh, the amount of people I've heard say Logic is what got me into rap. Yeah. Like so many people say that." Yeah, and I'm like, "That makes sense because he's a very like, if you're not into like the whole hip hop scene, like." He'll, I don't know, he'll give you a better first impression than someone else. Yeah. You know, that is, I I get what you're saying, but it it's just a weird concept to me that, um, well, so for example, the other day, um, I think she went by Sophie, who was a big producer that passed away. Oh, yeah. Did you hear about that mm-hmm. the other day? Um, I don't really know anything about Sophie or mm-hmm. her music or whatever, but what I did read a lot of was like, oh, you know, you might not have heard of her, but she was your favorite producer's favorite producer. That's like MF Doom. Yeah, yeah. like what mm-hmm. people said, he's your favorite rapper, favorite rapper. And what's weird is in conversation, if you were to say, oh, I really like MF Doom, you get this like label, like, oh, like he, he likes hip hop now. Yeah. But if you're like, my favorite artist is Logic, they're like, <laughs> okay, but it's kind of a joke. But it's weird because like, they both make good music and to a lot of people, I can get why if you listen to MF Doom, I totally get why someone would not like that. Yeah. Like if you're not an avid into hip hop. Yeah. So I don't know, just the concept that you're like some better fan of hip hop just because you, like I feel like there's people that try to get, the, they try to convince themselves they like listening to MF Doom. Even yeah. if they don't, just because of like, oh, I listen to MF Doom. <laughs> yeah. I think there's definitely a lot of that. I think, um, that's that's the case with a lot of rappers that we've talked about. Like you get put down for listening to them. And that's the end of the day, music is all like opinion. Yeah. So it doesn't really make sense. But in some cases, I understand it because there's a long history of like, n- I'm not saying this is the case with Logic, but like white rappers coming in and they, they get like the frat boy label <laughs> and they're kind of known yeah. to like only appeal to hip hop when it's relevant to them and only when it's when it's uh helpful and then they'll appeal to like the white college crowd yeah. when they want to sell tickets. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I don't know how we got here. I, don't we, either, yeah, yeah. I think but, this is still the intro. <laughs> yeah, but speaking of uh, movies, you were talking about MF- MGK's movies. Uh, you texted me the other day out of nowhere with a very… <laughs> I just like look at my phone and I was like, this is a lot to process right now. <laughs> So do you want to break down this this idea that you texted me so, on yeah. the podcast? So obviously, like, I'm into music. That's, like, one of my biggest passions. But, like, my biggest, like, pastime right now is, like, I'm a big… I'm not, like, a big nerd when it comes to this because I don't, like, read the comics. But, like, I love superhero movies. And mm-hmm. I've been keeping up with, like, WandaVision, the new Marvel show yeah. that's on Disney+. Plus. And I also watch The Mandalorian. And I really like the model of like dropping one episode a week on streaming and like uh, over like dropping a whole season because I just noticed I like those shows better because for me as a fan, I will watch the episode. Then I have a whole week and I there's all these YouTube channels I follow that like post breakdowns. They post yeah. like theories. They post all this stuff. And I get so much more out of it as a fan keeping up with it. Than I would had they just dropped the whole season and I'd binge it. And I probably wouldn't yeah. like it that much by the end. Yeah. Um, it gives you time to like process and come up with… To actually realize how you felt about it and right. what you think is going to happen. Instead of just like force feeding yourself the whole thing in one, in one sitting. Exactly. And it, I think it probably makes more sense for Disney and big companies to release it that way. Because it lasts longer and it gives more time to build up. And they they, they drop trailers for each episode. Yeah. And so like… That just creates more hype ultimately. And it's like, I'm fine with like, I'm not like, I think it's a good thing if the company is doing good and people actually like the show. That's better than people not liking the show and they're just making a bunch of money because 
you had to pay for a subscription to see every single episode yeah. and you quit after the third. Yeah. But anyways, the reason I texted you that is because I think it's super similar to like music artists where it makes way more sense to like drop a song a week over dropping one 16 song album a year. Yeah. Like or a couple of those. And I think it's interesting because they're kind of going down the same path and it's ultimately a result of people having really low attention spans and also there's so much TV and there's so much music to consume. Yeah. But anyways, I was like, I got to text John this because or else I'll forget. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So, so, but what exactly are you saying? Like, do you think that you, you think it would be cool if the music industry kind of took over this model in a way where you, or like what, what is your proposal or, or was it just well, the idea that like you enjoy this model? And I that, think like, it's interesting because I am more of a casual fan of like, like I don't know that much about movies and TV. Like I want to learn more, but yeah. I am more the equivalent of someone that's like really new to hip hop. Yeah. And when it comes to music, I'm more on the side of like drop albums. Like I think the best music comes in like projects and takes time to create. But I understand that it makes more sense as a creator to drop weekly. Yeah. And when it comes to TV shows, I notice I like when they drop weekly better yeah. than like a whole movie even. And I, I think it could get to the point where like movies will probably always be like king. Yeah. And like, and, but maybe it's going to get to the point where these shows that drop weekly are going to be like just as big or bigger. Yeah. No, okay. I, I get what you're saying. Like, okay. Tell me if this, if I'm wrong. But okay. from my understanding, it seems kind of like like the way I view film is I feel like I am a huge fan of these like, I, I think a lot of people call them art house movies. Meaning okay. they're movies that are like, they're movies made for people who love film and appreciate film. So it's not the blockbuster movies. It's like these artsy. It's like artsy, the MF Doom of movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's these movies that, you know, get submitted to festivals and like they get awards and stuff. But to the average movie goer, it's like, what was the point of that like they movie? Don't, the, the average person isn't paying attention to like, themes and story arcs yeah, and character yeah. development. Yeah, a like lot of people just of want some like, you know, something to eat popcorn and like have a good yeah. time. But like, where was I going with that? So it seems like kind of with, with music, you're kind of that way where like you can appreciate this like full album that took years to create and it's a complex story with mm -hmm. these different themes and messages and meanings that you can like really appreciate. But then the average music listener is like, yo, when's the next banger? Yeah, like exactly like Elijah said. He's like, what's next Friday? Yeah. So, no, I agree. I think that's super interesting. And it seems like a lot of artists are kind of already going to that model of like the episodic releases in a way. Yeah. Um, but what would be cool to me is if, you know, it's... So with these shows, they release one episode a week and then at the end, like after the... 10th week or whatever then it's just up there forever like yeah whatever what you could do is like you release a single a week off of this album and if there's like 18 songs or something or 15 songs after those 15 weeks that's the album that's then yeah then the album is like the whole thing which I mean I guess people do that I think Jerome did that um and I think it'd be cool like I've seen artists do it but I've only seen a few do it where it's like conceptual that mm -hmm. way um and I think that would be cool. I've thought about like potentially doing that, but I don't know. Because I, I was like, I want to drop weekly, but I also make better. I think I make better music if I'm trying to create a project because yeah. it's more cohesive. But then I just kind of scratched the idea. But anyways, <laughs> maybe I'll get back to it. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I think it makes more sense. Like, Also, it's interesting because these TV shows that I've mentioned, like the Marvel ones and the Star Wars ones are they have these huge budgets as if it is a movie. Yeah. And it's the first time I think like a TV show actually like looks as good as a movie. Yeah. Like, there are a bunch of other good examples, but with Star Wars and um, Marvel in particular, like especially superhero shows in the past, I think they look terrible. Yeah. Like all the DC movie like shows, <laughs> like a bunch of people are big fans of them, but like I always thought they looked horrible and like yeah. super low budget. Well, and not only the low budget, but the low, the quick turnaround time. Like yeah. these movies have three years to do CGI and totally. these shows have like a couple months. Yeah, or whatever. it makes sense. And um, what was I going to say? Even like, I don't know if you know about like the whole story behind Justice League. So the movie that came out in 2017, mm -hmm. basically it came out in the middle. They, uh, the director, uh, 
uh, stepped down because uh, he had some family stuff going on. They brought in a new director and people ended up hating the movie and they yeah. were like, release the Snyder Cut, like the original yeah, director. Yeah, yeah. And so they're finally doing that this year, like four years later. Yeah. And they're doing it through a TV show. Like they're going to release weekly, I'm pretty sure. Oh, so the Snyder Cut is yeah. going to be split up like as if it was a I think, series. Because I think the whole thing is like four hours of footage. Oh. And I'm pretty sure it's not all new footage, but it's all different footage from the movie. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a movie released that way. It's kind of yeah. like, yeah, because there's some movies where they have like an intermission. Okay, I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen some of Quentin Tarantino. I think it's yeah. Hateful Eight has an intermission where it, I watched that on Netflix for the first time in the episode format. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Wait, The Hateful Eight is in an episodic format on, on Netflix. Netflix? Yeah, I think it's Dude, like four episodes. that's dope. I didn't mm -hmm. know that. And um, apparently, like what I've read from like people that do reviews, they like that format better. Yeah. Because there's, it, it's like the extended version. So there's more scenes than were originally in it. Yeah. But I really like that movie. That's like one of my favorite Tarantino movies. Yeah. But. Well, okay. So I have another like... <laughs> conceptual idea mm -hmm. um so this idea that i've had is for like a movie but i want to explain it and see what your thoughts are in terms of like if this were possible an album oh, okay, like okay. a music album yeah yeah so <clears throat> i was talking to my buddy about how like every movie you really see the fo the main character is either a person or like a animal or something with like but it it's like conscious. It has human-like characteristics usually. Right. Like you you usually don't see a movie about like a leaf. Wait, is this like, what you talked about on Pims? I might have. I don't remember. I heard you say something about like trees. I don't okay, know. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically my idea is a movie where it's a bunch of just like short excerpts put together mm -hmm. of a certain spot in the world. So like a particular tree and this tree and it basically like has a clip of someone from like the 1800s talking next to this tree and then it has a clip of someone who's Ooh. like in 2020 is next to this tree having a conversation so it, it's telling the story of the tree more than it is so telling the story of the people it's like the tree over time kind of yeah. yeah okay so that's the idea okay but then my thought was like how could we turn that not me because i'm not gonna make it <laughs> <laughs> but somebody i would love if there was like an album with that same concept but musically so maybe it's in, instead of like telling a narrative story from start to finish of like this person's oh. life or a story, maybe it's like, I don't know. I'm kind of lost like now. The first song is like, maybe not like ancient, but like from the first song, it sounds like a 19 something song, like from the, oh, like a soul yes. song or something. And it's like each song's like a new decade. That would be cool. I, I know you're not into like Marvel and like superhero stuff, but the WandaVision show I don't I don't want to like spoil but the part of the concept that that you know from the trailers is like the first episode is it's a sitcom in the 1950s the next episode is a, it's the same people in the same story but it's a sitcom in the 60s oh. and the 70s and it works its way up and in the trailer footage it gets to the point where like eventually it's like modern family oh like there're all these remakes of these dope. shows but like and it's always a sitcom each yeah, episode yeah it's it's really interesting i think it's the show is like a sitcom meets Marvel meets Lost. It's like super confusing. Whoa. But yeah, no, but like, I don't know. Don't you think I at least would love to listen to a project like that where it's very, I guess that is the whole idea behind a concept album is you take some obscure idea and try and turn this into like a musical project. But right. like, I don't know whether it's like that or if it's like each song is. I don't know, like an like, uh, actual storytelling song about... Yeah, like a certain perspective. So maybe it, each maybe each song, maybe there's 10 songs and it's all about like the same thing, but it's from like a different perspective of that same thing. Yeah, or like, that, could be, that could be a whole play on just like humanity of how in ancient times they didn't know what the sun was. So they're like, it must be a god. And then, yeah. and then it's like, now we have science and we're like, well, it's probably more likely just the rotation of our like universe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> that was good. That was very… <laughs> you struggled there for a second, but I got what you were going for. Um, yeah. Like that would be cool. Or… Okay. Hear me out. An album. And the whole concept is like… 
All right, let's say the World it's called World Series, all right? Okay. And I I mean I don't really care about baseball that much, but <laughs> It's it's all about the World Series, but each song is about like the different perspective of like what this entails for different people. So like one is about like a one of the players in the World Series, and then one is about like a janitor that works at the stadium during Ooh, the World Series, okay. and then one is about like the bus driver who's transporting people who are going to downtown for the World Series. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think that's a cool concept. <laughs> I think there's kind of similar things. Sort of like uh, Ross Cappuccioni is like the the song about Ross, and then it's told from the guy that attempts to kill him, like something yeah, like that, yeah. where it's like all of these different perspectives. I don't mean to get dark, but like, what if you did like nine eleven, like oh. all the different, like you got the first responders, you got like people witnessing it, yeah. people actually in the plane, like it'd be super messed up, but yeah. Like, some big event like that yeah. where you can tell different stories. But then the thing with those ideas is like to me they're they're really cool, but I don't I don't know I'm 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 I can't think of the word, but I feel like to the general public those ideas are very like short-lived or like kind yeah. of like they get old quick and I think an artist like Joyner Lucas who you just mentioned like that song he's an artist that I think could do something like that, but then the question is, at what point do these like concept albums or these these really deep ideas? At what point does it go from being cool and new to just like how out deep overplayed can you get? Yeah. and like just kind of um pretentious? I guess is the word. Yeah, I think that's another reason why Joiner. I mean, he did have like a storytelling song on his last project, but I think he's trying to avoid that a little bit and like only making lyrical songs because yeah. like he doesn't want to even though he has the storytelling lyrical label already, he's trying to like, I don't know, do different stuff, expand a little bit and not just get that one label. But I don't know. I think I love storytelling songs. So I think someone needs to take these concepts and use them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe not my ideas, but there's <laughs> there's some ideas out there that need to be made. Are there any... um? Have you ever just over the years of making music had an idea that you're like, I can't believe no one's ever made something like that or like or something that like, wow, this I want to make this one day. Maybe not now. Maybe you don't have the assets now or the the idea or the inspiration yet. But is there anything that you've just has been in the back of your mind and for years of like, well, I had a concept where I was like, oh, I it was back when I was like 16. I came up with it while I was like working at my first job and I was like listening to music, like working on something. And I'm like, I came up with the idea and I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. This is going to be so perfect. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to make an album called The Prestige, like the movie The Prestige. Because yeah. there's like, I don't even remember what they are, but there's the three acts of like the, of like a magic trick basically. And I don't, the last one's The Prestige. I don't even remember what they are, but I was yeah. like, I should make an album with like, three different acts and like oh, they're okay. labeled the first one's this act second one is this act third one's the prestige and it's kind of like a lot of rappers first albums are like the story of them coming up yeah and like uh becoming success successful or being the rapper they yeah. are today and i was like the prestige could be like a metaphor for that because it's like all these different things you go through to pull off this magic trick and i'm like if i become a successful rapper i'm basically pulling off a magic trick and yeah. like tricking everyone into believing what I just pulled off. Oh. And I'm like, this is perfect. <laughs> it's super and then meta. I found, yeah, I found an album that was literally, like it wasn't the same concept, but it was broken into three acts that, and they were labeled oh, no. th the ones from The Prestige. And Wait, like, was the album called The Prestige? No, it was oh. called like something completely different, but it was just broken up into those three acts. And I was like, I literally had no clue this existed and it came out in like 2013 or yeah. something like that. And I was like Damn. pretty bummed out. But Have you ever had... um? Like Quentin Tarantino, mm -hmm. I've heard from what I've read about him, he, I think it's him. One of these iconic directors, I'm, I'm almost positive it's Quentin Tarantino, but someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But so apparently at the start of his career, he literally listed out every single movie he's going to make mm -hmm. and he followed through with it. So he was like, I'm going to make Pulp Fiction, Hateful Eight, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Kill Bill. And supposedly... His next movie is his last. His last yeah, one. Yeah, I've heard that. So the, I, I believe that he probably said that at some point. Yeah, in his career. that's crazy. What do you? What do you? How do you feel about stuff like that? Like these ideas where 
an artist kind of has this idea. <laughs> Because that's kind of what J. Cole's doing. You know what I just realized? Huh. That's exactly what, like, Logic, obviously, like, Bobby Tarantino. Oh, yeah. Remember when he was, like, after everybody, like, I'm retiring? He was just trying to be Quentin Tarantino. Oh, <laughs> dude. That's so funny. And I guess he, I mean, he didn't end up retiring. But then he ended up retiring yeah, but... after, like, another two albums. But... Dude, I never even thought of that. Like, because he's <laughs> That's exactly probably he's... why he did it. Yeah, he's had so many references to well, Quentin and the, Tarantino. The very next project he dropped was Bobby Tarantino, too. So yeah. I guess that probably was the reference that no one got. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird to me that, like, I don't know. Because I feel like as an artist, everyone makes it such a big deal to try and, like, be your own artist and be yourself not be someone else yet he like, like name yourself he literally named himself and like has this whole affinity I, yeah. with, with like quentin tarantino i think i think obviously he gets a lot of criticism for like taking from other people but i do think it's different if it's someone outside of your like medium yeah um because i mean like there's other people that have done stuff like that like jid and DiCaprio, like his DiCaprio yeah, oh, mixtape. Yeah, that's true. But I'm sure there's other people I can't <laughs> think of right now. But yeah, it, it'd be different if he was like, I'm the next Tupac. You know, it's like, okay, <laughs> it's chill. Like, All right, let's stop. <laughs> yeah, no, imagine you just drop like Matt posts like on his Instagram, like, all right, uh, my next four albums, one of them's called 2015 Forest Hills Drive <laughs> or 2021 Forest Hills Drive. Uh, the next one is called... Uh, the Marshall Mathers LP3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're just copying literally everyone. Um, yeah, no, but what do you... I don't know. What do you think of that where you like from the get-go, you know everything you want to do in your career and like you you stick to that scheme? I think it's cool. Like it's, it's like, wow, you must be really smart to have all that plan. But at the same time, like I know like three months ago, what I thought my 2021 was going to look like is already <laughs> exactly opposite. So yeah. like, there's no way I would be able to stick to something like that. So I can't imagine, like, I feel like there's a chance that he said that and then like wanted to pivot, but he's like, now I can't because I already said it and I yeah. want to make sure I, like I'm this far deep in, it'd be pointless to stop now. Yeah. That's the scariest part of having or just like announcing plans or like your goals to the world is because yeah. at least for me, I hate when I, if I say I'm going to do something and then you don't do it because not only is there like internal pressure, but then there's the pressure because you feel like everyone, even though most people probably don't care. Right. But like you have this idea that like, oh, everyone else, I told them I'm going to do it and now I'm not going to do it. And I don't know. I just feel like putting that label of like, all right, in 2022, I'm going to drop this project called this. It's like, that's so, it's like, you now you have to do that. Yeah, that's like what the new, like, that's a, it's a weird term, but like the new generation of rap, like, has a problem with is like making songs and like putting up, like, in the studio, they'll post a video of them playing the song and, and leaking it. Yeah. And they'll be like, a uh, whole lot of red coming this year, like, stuff <laughs> like that. And, uh, how it took Lil Uzi Vert like three years to drop an album. Like it creates a lot of problems, but it also came to the point where it's like benefiting the artist to where like these leaks become bigger than the actual song. Yeah. And it, it ends up becoming a new form of like marketing. But um, I've heard a lot of talks about the new Drake project coming up that like apparently, it's so, like whenever Drake's about to drop a project, there's always like fake emails going around to like the top like people in the industry of like, the the new Drake album, here's a leak and it's always like a fake one. And it's always like the songs that aren't going to make the cut that got leaked. And Wait, wait. So so Drake they and his company or whatever, they intentionally send songs to the in, people well, in the industry? I think what the theory is is that this time that's what's happening. And in the past, whenever Drake's like in album mode or whatever, like uh, people will find a bunch of leaked songs, make a folder um, and send it out to everyone in the industry and be like, this is the new Drake album. Oh. But it's really just whatever they can find. Yeah. Um, and so it's always like the not as good songs because yeah. they're the ones that get leaked. Like they're not the ones that are actually going to make the album. Yeah. And I just saw a bunch of people saying like the Drake leaks are like insane. Oh. So like the album that's coming must be like even more insane. Yeah. So Have like, you listened to some of the no, ones that have been leaked so like, far? I heard this on the, the Joe Budden podcast. Oh, okay. So like 
and he's not like a fan of Drake. Like he has like beef with Drake and he was yeah. like, whatever Drake's about to drop is going to be insane. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, no, I mean, it's super, it's super smart. The, um, cause you just get so many people talking about it and yeah, I, I know I agree. I do think that it's, I think it, at least some of the leaks are definitely intentional. Yeah. Cause like, well, and the Playboy Cardi stuff, mm-hmm. like that album finally did come out, right? Yeah. I heard like it was just, I, I heard it was terrible. I don't know. That's what I heard, but I know some, a lot of people liked it. So. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, I don't really listen to Playboy Cardi. Like that's not really my style, but I just heard like a lot of opinions on both sides, but. Part of me thinks like maybe all of that delay, 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 maybe that was all on purpose just to try and build as much potential hype as possible. Yeah. Like maybe it came out exactly when it was supposed to. Because I know he kept saying like, oh, this Friday. And like, and I followed him just because I wanted to keep up to date with all this like delays and this drama. Yeah. And maybe that was just the idea behind it all. I mean, it definitely could have been. But I also think there's a mix of like, it's like when a movie gets made like The Incredibles gets like a sequel like I don't know however many years after the first one where it's like the first one was so loved that like he's finally dropping the next one like there's so much buzz that it can actually hurt it. Yeah. So it's probably like a tough you have to find the balance between the two. Yeah. So I don't know what that would be like. It's crazy. (laughs) Well and that's that's interesting too because there's some there's like So the example with Drake's leaks and the Playboy Cardi stuff, trying to hype up his album, that's like the polar opposite of... There's another approach that some movies do and where literally there's no marketing Mm -hmm. and it's just, bam, it's dropped and no one knew. And it's like, holy shit. new J. Cole album. Yeah. Like what? (laughs) Like a J. Cole drop tonight and like no one knew. And then that hype is sometimes even more powerful. Like I remember... Two, two or three years ago, like at the halftime of the Super Bowl, there was a commercial for a new Netflix movie. And it was, um, shit, what movie was it? It was like a space movie. I forget. Cloverfield. It was like a oh, new, okay. another one in the Cloverfield franchise, which is like a popular yeah. franchise. But like there was no marketing until they're like, yeah, as soon as the Super Bowl ends, it'll be on Netflix. And it was like, that was a huge marketing thing because as soon as it ended, at least for me, I knew a ton of people. They're like, holy shit, let's go watch it. And they immediately turn off the Super Bowl, put it on Netflix. And like that type of marketing, I mean, I think it can be good, but you need to have like a lot of people that already care about you. You you can't be dropping your first project like that. (laughs) But yeah. Matt's just like, does no marketing and then drops like a, the biggest project you've ever worked on. (laughs) Dude, can you imagine (laughs) Yo, that'd be, cr- you know, it'd be sick. I don't know how much a Super Bowl ad costs. Definitely like it's multi, like multi million. Like, or is it like hundreds of millions? I don't even know. <laughs> like, it's super. Up I think there. like, I don't think hundreds, millions. Okay. Probably a couple million. Okay. I don't know. But like, imagine if, I don't know, this would never happen. But imagine if like some person of like your size, if you did like a TikTok that went viral and you started a GoFundMe mm-hmm. and it was like, guys, like, I'm really good at music. I'm making this GoFundMe to get a Super Bowl ad this year. The sad thing <laughs> is, that is, like, not completely impossible when you look at the fact that, like, hear me out, what just happened with, like, the whole GameStop stuff. Like, that is yeah. all memes. <laughs> like, literally, a meme can, like, pe- there was probably millions of dollars put into that. Oh, yeah. No, there like, was people that just made, memes. like, tens of millions on, and people that lost yeah. Billions because of memes. <laughs> so if someone had that same influence where they started like a Reddit page that just got like that insane, like yeah. they could literally pull something off like that. Yeah. Or like how the TikTok, you remember last year, all the TikTok influencers bought like all the tickets to a Trump rally and then no oh, one went. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Like that's a big, that's people coming together and doing a big thing. And I, I honestly think that could happen. Like imagine if there was a subreddit and it was like, I don't know what you'd have to do in order to get that sort of people, like that amount of people behind you. Yeah. Because if it was music, I don't think there'd be, it's not like a wide enough appeal for everyone to want to support would have you. I to be like, because there's, there's certain people that sometimes get like a buzz on the internet that are like, I don't even know how to describe it, but they're like really bad. And 
it's like the Ice JJ Fish kind of thing. Where What's that? What's that? Well, he, okay. He was this <laughs> singer, I guess you could call him, like years back. He put out this song. You've probably heard it. And it's like so bad. Like his <laughs> singing is like, it sounds like straight voice crack. But like he thinks it's really good. And he got signed. Like the video got so viral that he got signed. Yeah. And like I'm sure the label, they probably knew he was bad. But they're like, people are listening. So yeah. like, and what's sign him? Yeah. Uh, like, and he's kind of a big name. Like I'm sure a lot of people know who he is on that are listening. But like… Yeah. Anyway, someone like that, if they got a big enough following, could like pull something off like yeah. that. Yeah. That'd like be a- so sick. You just, you're watching the Super Bowl with your boys and then like Matt just has an <laughs> ad up there and it's like the shittiest ad ever. And he, oh my God. Check out my new song. It's like <laughs> up, super guys? bad lighting filmed on my phone. <laughs> yeah. It's like vertical and like all the, the black bars are on the side. That's something I would like to see is, I don't really know why. I, I don't think anyone would ever do this, but like, TVs becoming vertical and like movies filmed <laughs> vertically. Well, do you know the whole <laughs> what's the thing called? There was a streaming service that did that. Really? That failed last this Quibi? last year. Quibi. Yeah. Was they vertical? That was their that was their whole thing was they were gonna they were trying to make like Netflix style shows. Uh-huh. So like Netflix originals, it'd be like Quibi originals. Yeah. But they could be watched vertical or horizontal. Oh. And that was like <laughs> people were making fun of it because it's like that's so dumb. Like there's a reason people film horizontally. Yeah. And they're like, no, it'll be good because it's like, they're like these shows put in the 10 minute section so people can watch it on the way to work. It's and more that kind casual. Of that yeah, it's way. more casual. And I'm like, is it really that hard to turn <laughs> your phone? Especially like iPhones are like six feet long now. Like it's, yeah. it's meant for it now. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that frustrates me so much is why people like, you know, anytime you watch a show, it's it's horizontally, yeah. right? It's widescreen. Yet, as a video guy, it just eats me alive whenever people like send videos to me for whatever reason. Just don't film them vertically. Yeah. Like, I hate that. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know. You would just think that if you're always watching movies horizontally, in my head, I just know when I go to film something, I go like this. Yeah. Not like this. Yeah. And then people send you a video and it's vertical. It's like, I can't do anything with this. Social media. Well, I mean, that was already an established thing to let, like that when iPhones came out that people filmed that way and it's like, that's the wrong way to do it. Yeah. But like social media made that worse because if you're scrolling through Instagram it's all and you vertical. get a horizontal, like that thing's tiny. And it's <laughs> yeah. not going to do well in the algorithm. You need those vertical versions. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's what's so dumb. I just, I hate that. That like, because a widescreen video cinematically looks better. Yeah. And like as a, that's why if you ever follow directors and stuff, their Instagram pages kind of suck. Oh, yeah. Because they always <laughs> post like… And sometimes they do the wide video with black bars in it too. Oh, so it's yeah. like a tiny Even little smaller. video. Yeah. And it's… I understand them because like to them, that's the best viewing experience. But to everyone else, it's like they just scroll past it. You know? Yeah. That's like… I didn't understand what… IMAX even like meant when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, it's just like a bigger screen and like (laughs) better sound and stuff like that. Yeah. What do you think? Um, like in terms of music, what is like the best and the worst ways and places to consume music as like a producer and like you mix your own stuff? What do you like rank some of the ways that people listen to music from like worst to best? Well, I think listening to music alone is always better. Mm-hmm. Like I always thought like obviously besides like a concert, like that is probably yeah. the ideal place to listen to music. <laughs> but um, but even at concerts, the sound systems are not always the best. Sometimes they suck. Yeah. Like I like the smaller venues because I think those are better like a show box. But anyways, like for me, car rides alone, car rides with people, those are like that's not a good place to consume music for the first time. Mm-hmm. Cause, uh, but for like many reasons, but like if it's like a, a classic song to all your friends, like that's like a yeah. different kind of vibe. But anyways, so I think like car rides alone are like one of the best places. Um, I don't know. I like to be, it depends. Cause like sometimes it, it, it's better to be doing stuff. Sometimes it's better to just be sitting and doing nothing. Yeah. Um, Sometimes. But in terms of like actual devices, oh, like devices. just I'm talking about like in terms of the, how the music most should be listened have. to. Let's see. So like, uh, so like really nice the big speakers you have, like the yeah, like monitors. Like are those, those like are the best? The, I mean, like I would prefer to listen on those, but I also 
like my car speakers a lot. Um, okay. They're not like anything crazy, but just because it's like a place I can be alone or I can like be moving. So it's kind of like creating of this sounds dumb, but like a visualizer for myself. Yeah. Versus like if I'm just sitting at my desk, like I'm at my desk a lot. Yeah. And so I don't really like to be in there unless I'm like working on music. Yeah. But um, or I don't know. Like I I just think in like phone speakers are getting better, but like mixes have to be really good for you to actually hear what's going on in a yeah. song through a phone speaker. Yeah. I oh th- I think you'd really like this because you are into audio and mixing and stuff. Um, So I read this article in this interview with Christopher Nolan, who we both love, Mm -hmm. about his newest movie, Tenet, which have you seen it or no? No, not yet. Okay, so neither have I, but that's not really what the point of this. So I've heard a lot. One of the biggest criticisms with Tenet is that like, it's pretend you can't hear it. No, like the, the sound mixing is... Well, is it people say really terrible. dynamic? Like it's some parts are extra quiet and some parts are like louder. Yeah, but well, mainly partly that, but it's also in a lot of the times you can't hear the dialogue of the characters because the sound effects and the environment are overpowering. Like oh. really? And there's clips. I'll show you afterwards, but you can Google like there's Tenet thousands sound. of videos on YouTube of people analyzing it and like, why would he have done this? Yeah. Why would Christopher Nolan do it this way? Um, Like there's this clip where it seems like important dialogue that you need to hear for the movie to make sense. Yeah. Yet you just hear like a train car going by and it's like, bah, 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 and you just like can't, you can barely hear what they're saying. Mm-hmm. And in this interview, the interviewer asked him like, why do you do that in this, in this movie in particular, it seems worse. And he was saying that, um, that it was intentional and that they do it. He did it because like to him, the overall cinematic experience is not necessarily always about like what is being said. Although that information is part of it, it's like, I don't know. You'd have to look it up word for word, but he was basically saying that like, it's done that way on purpose because although that information is important, it's like the atmosphere is more important. Yeah, that's and what like I the was feeling thinking. that you get during that exchange is the most important. Yeah. Maybe I'll hate it when I watch it, but that <laughs> sounds like, cool to me like that makes sense like it's when you can't hear someone over like noise or like background stuff it creates like a sense of like stress and like panic yeah I don't know it's like because there's like chaos going on yeah like being at like I hate the feeling of like trying to talk to someone and there's like it's like super loud and you have to like yell you know yeah I hate that feeling (laughs) yeah but you do feel a different way yeah. in there in that scenario than you would if you could just hear someone perfectly. Yeah. And that makes sense. I mean, maybe that's him trying to be realistic because it's like in real life, it's not like you're hearing everyone perfectly through IMAX speakers. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and well, then also speaking of that, additionally, one of the issues that I think is kind of the bigger issue of the two is that he said that when they work with the sound engineers on the final version of the movie, what they do is Not only is it mixed a certain way for theaters, but it's mixed also a different way for home release. Okay. So the version you watch on Netflix is a totally different mix than the version you watch in an IMAX theater. Yeah. But he said when they mix it for theaters, they mix it according to the best possible movie theaters out there. So he's because he's like, we can't mix it for a thousand different sound systems, right? Yeah. So he said that what they do is they like, they, they basically mix it for the ideal viewing experience, which is like a nice movie theater with new sound systems. But as a result, when they mix it that way, if you go to a theater that's you like kind of like old, shake and stuff yeah, like that. it just doesn't sound as good as it should. Uh-huh. And so apparently certain theaters, if you, I, I read that if you saw Tenet in like an old theater, you, can't hear you just all. can't hear shit and it sounds terrible. Yeah. Which sucks. That makes sense because I'm... I don't know anything about like theaters and like speaker setup there, but like I bet you in these mixes, there's probably a lot of like depth. So like you can hear a lot of like panning and a lot of like stereo imaging. So like you can hear like, so I don't know if someone's talking from the right, like you can tell it's coming from Mm. the right side of the speakers. Mm -hmm. And if a train's going by, you can hear it like going across the like the stereo image, which is like, the space you're hearing. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and you can also create things through like reverb and stuff like depth, like further back and closer mm-hmm. up. And there's all these different techniques you can do. And I'm sure in crappier 
theaters, there's less and less speakers. And so like the surround sound just sucks. Yeah. Um, and so I'm sure in like the best possible speaker like setup you can think of, like that tenant probably sounds really cool because yeah. it's, you can hear everything that's going on, but you can still hear like what they're saying. Yeah. And I think that that was the the intention, but yeah. it like it gets messed up sometimes. But when you're mixing music, do you like reference like, this, other? Yeah. Do, will you use like, all right, now I just did it through these monitors, but now I'm going to do it through, I'm going to go play it through my phone and see how it sounds there. And then I'm going to play it through headphones and see what sounds there. Yeah. That's like pretty much once the songs like mix and stuff, like it's just 90% just like doing dip, finding different speakers and stuff like <laughs> that. Um, And like, I've been using my monitors for a while. I've had my headphones for a little bit and I've, had my car speakers like since I was 16. And so those especially are where I'll check for references because sometimes something will sound really good through the phone, through the speakers, through my headphones. And then I'll take it out to the car and it's like, oh, the bass is like insane because oh. those speakers don't pick up the same frequencies. Yeah, And it's really important to reference all these things. And like, uh, I remember it was like in the 2000s, but um, 40 Drake's producer and mm -hmm. like engineer would always say like, I mainly check my mixes on my laptop because at the time like blogs were big so that was the first place people would hear your song is oh. like on your laptop speaker and now I think you should have that same philosophy but with your phone because like Instagram is where someone's going to hear a clip of your song for the first time or they're going to if they're clicking on the link to go check out your song they're probably going to like either add it and maybe listen later or they're going to if they're going to check it out at all they're going to play it on your phone right away so if it sucks yeah. on the phone like they're never going to get to hear it on their speakers yeah that's super interesting so you kind of prioritize how it sounds yeah. on your phone over anything. and i kind of wish i had airpods i don't know if those are even i have like apple headphones and i check on those sometimes but like like the regular kind mm -hmm. i don't know if the sound's any different because i feel like like most people don't have like a Bluetooth speaker, a head, pair of headphones, yeah. great car speakers. They have like one or two places they listen to music. And yeah. so you kind of have to mix for that. Yeah, that's a good point. I listen to 95% of my music. On your phone, right? On my phone or AirPods. Yeah. That's it. Because <laughs> you, you, you're, you're like your car, you don't listen in your car. Yeah, because my car, my sound system's all like fucked up and has been for a while because I got in an accident. But like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I never listen to music in my car. So that's a really good point that I like I haven't listened to music in a good speaker in a really long time. Yeah. Which is weird. And that's I think there's a lot of people that are a little bit like it's different in a movie because a movie is like you're doing these showings like the, I, everyone knows the ideal place is a theater and like yeah. it's being shown to you versus like I'm picking what to really play on my own system. Yeah. Um. But in music, I just feel like some people are like a little too pretentious when it comes to like, oh no, you have to listen to my stuff on like this insane setup. <laughs> like that's not realistic. Some Most people don't care about music that much. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's so weird to me is that video at least has gotten to a point now technologically where unless you're in the rare circumstance where you're editing a video for an actual movie that's going to be shown on these huge IMAX screens like I'm sure that process is different mm -hmm. but in terms of most people in the world videos there's like one format mm -hmm. like you just export it and it looks good on YouTube it looks good on your TV it looks good on your phone whatever you know what I'm saying yeah but with music I don't know like I I, I wonder and I, I hope that there gets to a point where the speakers are kind of universal in the sense that you wouldn't have to worry about mixing it for all these different possible speaker setups. You know? I, I I hope. I don't know if that's realistic just because like think about you go to any store and there's $4 headphones and like that's probably like like headphones that are like knockoff brand and like knockoff speakers are probably like a very solid percent of what like most Americans listen to music on. Yeah. It's like oh it's a speaker. It's cheap. Like it says it has more bass. Like, I'm going to listen to it on this. And it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it probably sucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's a good point. Because I guess most of the screens people consume stuff with are either pretty damn good laptops. Like, most laptops have pretty good screens. Yeah. Or like a ton of people have iPhones now. Or even, or Androids are still really good visually. Yeah. People aren't buying like knockoff <laughs> TVs usually. You yeah. Know you're what not I mean? buying like a $25 
screen, like monitor to right. watch stuff on usually. Wow, that's I never thought of that. Yeah, and it's a little different too because there's like, like you said, there's like one format for video. There, there kind of is an accepted like, there, there's a whole science behind like difference between MP3 and Wave and different sample rates and stuff yeah. like that that I don't know enough about. Yeah. Um, to really tell you the difference, and there's some people that claim they can hear a big difference between the two. Mm-hmm. I don't believe it. What but, are yours? Are uh, you upload like? Do you use Wave? Well, I or use MP3? I use Wave when I upload like a, a Wave file. I don't remember what I'd have to look like what the actual like specifics numbers specifics are. Yeah, here, which I should probably know as an engineer, but I'm not <laughs> an engineer. I just like to mix my own songs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, how much is the, like of a skill set difference is there between someone who is literally in like by trade is considered an engineer versus like what you do? Well, I don't know because. So, by trade, like, I'm thinking more like a traditional engineer, which are, in my opinion, are, like, the stereotypically, like, pretentious musician kind of people. (laughs) Like, stereotypically. So, like, not everyone, obviously. But they're the more, like, oh, like, you don't only use analog gear, which would be, like, oh, you don't film on film. Like, (laughs) you're, like, you suck. Yeah. Um, But then there's guys like Adrian Stresso that, like, aren't like traditional mix engineers but like are really damn good and like yeah. learned themselves and like learned online learned through I don't know however he learned yeah. but just like that kind of thing uh is becoming it's becoming more possible to become an engineer that way and mix at that high of a level and so like I'm kind of going a similar route as he did but like obviously he's just like years and years ahead yeah. so um I think it's just a showing that like technology is so different now that you can learn how to do it through like plugins versus plugins like like the effects in like music like a music DAW are like the digital version of the type of gear you would see in those like studio photos where there's like a million knobs yeah. and all these boxes <laughs> and stuff like those are just a digital version of yeah, that yeah, and yeah. it's so much more like convenient, convenient and cheaper and like sometimes it's even better like nowadays like people always say like you you can like analog gear is always like you get this sound you can't recreate but like you kind of can nowadays basically i was trying to make the comparison that like analog gear is film cameras it's like it gets this sound you can't get and like this look you can't get like through digital but like digital is becoming so good that you kind of can yeah so objectively in like technically would it would you say it is better to do it um what's the term like analog, analog yeah versus doing it digitally like is that objectively better but it's just kind of like not necessary anymore technically i don't i don't know if objectively better is the right word um but i don't know in my opinion it's with a lot of digital stuff because it's more convenient, it creates more possibilities. Yeah. But like analog will always get you this sound that you can't really get digitally. Okay. Like there's millions of plugins that are like emulating like the analog sound and are supposed to give you that back. But like if you're a top level artist or musician on like the highest budget possible, yeah. like I like you should like, like let's try out analog and yeah. like see what kind of different sounds we can get. Like, it's all about like mixing stuff up and experimenting. But like on a smaller level, it's just funny because there's there's guys that run these like like fifty thousand dollar studios with like crazy amounts of equipment that just really aren't that good. Cause it's like at the end of the day, it comes down to how good are you with the equipment, not how good is the equipment. Yeah. You know, that's a really good point. Um it, it reminds me of how a really good editor could turn could make a video look like it was filmed on film. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's not going to look the same as if you actually filmed it on film. Right. But it's like, at what cost? Is it worth going and filming something on film if a really good editor can just make it look dope regardless? You yeah. Know? The number one biggest mistake a new rapper, not biggest mistake, but like the most over asked question is like, what mic do I get? And it's like, Find any mic from like, like, I mean, don't get like a $20 mic, but get like a hundred to like 300, depending on what your budget is and like learn how to mix it, figure out, you don't have to go buy a million sound panels. Like I thought I did, but like 
find a way to record yourself without like insane room yeah like noise and find youtube videos on how to use compression eq reverb and just figure it out like it's not it's hard but like it's, it's not you impossible. don't need like thousands of dollars of equipment yeah well that's i'm so glad you brought that up i saw a photo literally yesterday or two days ago of drake in the studio like he's been posting a lot leading mm. up to this project and he was recording with an AT2020, which is like, it was oh, a- Oh, really? It was, he was in I a studio. That mic. Yeah. <laughs> it's it not was, a good mic. <laughs> it's the mic that Matt uses. It's the mic that uh, we, uh, we have a bunch back there. Where I'm not currently using them, but it's like, dude, Drake is making a song on a mic yeah. that's like $200. Uh -huh. I'm sure that you can- Right. And that also leads back into another point I was going to try to make that mics, like you got to learn about, if you're, if you're trying to get into audio, like, like this like signal chain and like signal flow. So like you have your mic, which goes into your cable, which goes into your interface, which goes into your computer. But you can also have stuff like preamps. Like I started using a preamp I got from Chase that has sounded a lot better. It creates this like, it's what's called like, um, like saturation, like tube saturation. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's technically an anal a piece of analog gear. And it's the only like piece I have. Yeah. But it, it gives me a little bit of a different vocal sound than before when it was just an AT20 going into a focus right which i don't think has any like preamp is just like it basically turns up your your vocal in a smooth way without like cuz if you plug in like one of these mics into like a really crappy interface yeah. and you turn it up a bunch you're going to get a lot of like fuzz and like buzzing and noise yeah um that you don't want and so like that's like a preamp is good cuz it'll turn it up and basically like in these big studios people will have preamps, compressors. Chase was telling me about this like video he saw of uh, Chris Lord Algae, who's like CLA. He's like this big creator of like all these different plugins. That's mm -hmm. like what he's kind of known for, but he's a, a mixing engineer. He had like this mic turned up all the way going through like 10 compressors, which is like insane. Yeah. And it creates this really unique sound. And there's, oh. there's all these things you just experiment with. And I, that's why I think engineering is interesting because it's, it's like a science in it of its own. Yeah. No, and it, it makes a big difference. Like when Matt, Matt has started editing these episodes and the audio quality of the versions that you do, <laughs> of not only our mics, but like also the guests. Oh, yeah. Sounds so much better than it would have if we just threw it in raw, like how mm -hmm. I normally would have done it. Yeah. And it's like, I, I didn't, I don't know how to edit podcasts, like, but I looked up a YouTube video and I'm like, oh, like I know these techniques. And like, I just needed to learn how to apply it to a, 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 a podcast because it's different when there's no beat and you're not yeah. mixing around something. And that's the focal point of what you're hearing. You yeah, know? definitely. Um, well, before we wrap it up, I, I've missed doing the, you know, our little segment of what have you been listening to? Oh, and yeah. It's been a minute since we've done it. So Matt, what has been in your uh, playlist? Well, Today, You're not a big playlist guy, actually, but. I've been listening to Caleb Mitchell because tonight he's dropping uh, his album "So Help Me God" too. Oh, and he hasn't dropped since. Well, he hasn't dropped an album or project since or October of 2018. So it's been a big buildup. Yeah, and so I'm excited for the project he's gonna drop. And he's definitely one of those artists that is like really like gained some traction. But yeah, I think that like this next album will could really take him like totally to a whole new level and have people like finally really find out about who he is. Yeah. I really want to like, if we can find a way to talk to him, I think that'd be sick. If you want to see Caleb Mitchell on this podcast, <laughs> go comment on one of his posts or something. I don't know. Yeah. Let him know we exist. <laughs> yeah, I know. We've DM'd him once and um, we're going to DM him again because we really want to get him on. Yeah. Um, he makes fire music. It'd, it'd be really dope. Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, so you've been listening to Caleb Mitchell. Oh yeah, and Who I'm else? also I'm still listening to Black Bear. Like I, I, I think at this point I'm just a fanboy. And I've <laughs> accepted it. Yeah, a uh, little bit of like still Arizona service. Who else was I listening to yesterday? Oh shoot, give me a second, dude. What's crazy is I while while you're thinking, yeah, I um. So Elijah Kyle did a pound cake remix. Oh yeah, the other day, I had never, dude. You guys are gonna hate me. I had never in my life, like, I, I've heard it in the car or with yeah. other people, but I'd never just gone out of my way and listened to the original Pound Cake. Yeah. 
and I went and listened to it. It's so good. And it's so fucking good, yeah. dude. I've just had it on repeat. I'm like, damn, I didn't realize how just good this song was as a whole. I've been listening to Futuristic. That's what I was trying to think of. Futuristic and Devon Terrell. Those are kind of like two of the guys that I like. And those are two of the people like earlier I was talking about that got me into like pop music. Even though neither of them make pop music. I just love it when like my favorite artists step out. And yeah. Experiment with those stuff. But what have you been listening to besides um, Drake? <laughs> yeah. I wanted to um, just kind of shout some people out. Because if you guys… Obviously, like I talked about before, my my… Vibe is definitely more uh, emo hip hop, I guess. Apparently, <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna rattle off some people and some songs, and I just would recommend them in case any of you listening want to listen to it. Um, so obviously, Breakins. Uh, there's this guy named Coda the Kota the friend. Kota the friend, yeah. I don't know. I didn't never knew who that was, but I found his song called BQE with Joey Badass, and it's really really good. Um, this guy named Joey Trap, Tokyo's Revenge. Don't okay. know, don't know who that is. Uh, Jack Kays, I f- found a few songs by Jack Kays, and I think he's really good. Forty Four Phantom, Eric Coda, uh, yeah. So just if you guys are just trying to find new music, check that out. Also, I highly recommend. I mentioned it on Pims, uh, my other podcast, Peak to Middle School, that I host with my buddy Kyle. One of my recommendations was. Go on Apple Music or Spotify. Just type in a random first name and then the f- random letter for the last name. Ooh. And then pick the first artist that you find and just force yourself to listen <laughs> to some of their music. And you'd be surprised. You might find a new artist you really like. That's cool. Because I did that a couple months ago. I typed in like, I don't know, like Jason M or something. Yeah. And just like clicked on one and I found a song that I liked. Yeah. you Try it with your own name. I feel like that'd be cool. Oh. Obviously like, I guess I probably shouldn't do that. But there's probably <laughs> a Matt M that like… Matt Mason. Well and… Uh, I like Matt Mason. Black Bear's name is like Matt M something. And oh, whoa. It's a Like sign. his old music is under <laughs> that name. But… <laughs> Damn. Does he have old music still up? Yeah. I think a few songs. Um, oh. But it, it, it was really like… I think he was writing for guys like… He literally wrote a song for like Big Time Rush. Like that's oh. how like different it was. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's it guys for this week. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to drop a like if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, go subscribe over there because we have full video versions. And personally, I think it adds a lot to the show. Yeah. You'd be surprised if you guys… I was the same way. Like when I first got into podcasts, I listened to them on Spotify. But my favorite show called The Basement Yard always said like, Yo, come watch on YouTube. And I promise it, it makes it way more fun for yeah. me at least. You get to it's like you're actually here. Yeah. And it's like watching a show or something. Um but yeah, anyways, Matt, where can they follow you? You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the Matt Mog. And you can check out all my music on whatever platform under Matt Mog. And hypothetically, there's a song relatively soon. If this comes out on Monday, there's a song on Friday. Oh, let's go. Yeah. All right, guys. You can follow me at Hey Narwhal on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Like I said, we have another show called Peak to Middle School. Go check that out. And with that being said, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.